I'm Dave. And I'm Andrew. And together we are the IB English Guys. We are IB teachers, we're IB examiners, we're teaching partners, and we are here for you to provide free content to help you master various aspects of the IB. Today we're talking about the individual oral and specifically how to zoom in and talk about a literary passage. That's right. We decided that we wanted to do a, give an example of zooming in on poetry. We think poetry, uh, poems make excellent texts to use for your I.O. They're very manageable. So we wanted to give you an example of uh, a zoom in where we examine that poem in relation to the global issue. And I like that. And just to give a quick definition for what does zooming in actually mean? Well, this is the moment where you have ripped your extract out of your novel or your poetry anthology or, or whatnot, and you are looking at it in great detail. You're zooming in and talking about specific authorial choices. You're evaluating them and thinking about how they connect to the global issue. Is That's that clear, great. Mr. Joss? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing two things well. We're using references to that text, and we are discussing authorial choices, all relating to the global issue. And you have approximately two to two and a half minutes for this very important task. What do you say? Do you want to take a rip at it? I, I would. I, I've got a Mary Oliver poem that I like, and I'm going to give it a crack. All right. Why don't you tell us uh, the name of the poem and the anthology it comes from, the year, and uh, let's take a stab at it. Okay. So I've chosen a poem called The Summer Day by Mary Oliver. It's a 1990 poem from her collection, The House of Light. Uh, this is, a, I think, a really interesting poem. It's down below. If you'd like to read the poem and maybe pause the video, you could have a look at the poem yeah. before I do the analysis. Why don't we do that right now so the analysis is more meaningful? Why don't you go ahead and push pause, read the poem yourself, and we'll see you back here in just about 30 seconds. Sounds good. Okay, welcome back. I hope you had an opportunity to read this really nice poem from Mary Oliver. Uh, we hear things about grasshoppers. I heard see sugar, and it's about prayer. And really, it, the poem seems to be about man or, or mankind's or humankind's relationship with nature. And, and Mr. Giles, kind of where are you going with this in terms of your global issue? Yeah, I want to talk about that engagement with nature and appreciation of the natural world, how that can lead to a sense of belonging and a sense of purpose and a kind of a, it leads people to a spiritual awakening. All right. Do you want to try to model this zoom in? It's pretty tough. I'm going to give it a go. All right. So Ready? before yeah, before you go, though, I just want to remind you of things you want to think about. You want to think about linking to the global issue. You want to think about authorial choices, and you want to think about, you can't have it all, Giles, so make good choices. It stress me out. All right, all we're right. good, we're good. Okay, here we go. The extract that I've chosen that connects to my global issue is The Summer Day by Mary Oliver, which is from her collection, The Summer, The House of Light from 1990. The global issue of engagement with the natural world and appreciation of nature can lead an individual to a sense of belonging. In line number one to three, we see the speaker asking philosophical questions. She's asking who made the world and who made the grasshopper and the swan and the black bear. And again, this array of animals and, and insects that she's observing and thinking about. And she's asking these unanswerable questions through this anaphora that she's asking these questions. And again, then she points to the grasshopper and she's observing the grasshopper eating sugar out of her hand. She's using visual imagery to describe the jaws moving back and forth and the enormous and complicated eyes. Again, this connects to my global issue of showing an appreciation of nature and connecting with that grasshopper and just appreciating it and, and, under, and looking at it. Then notice that the poem is written in the present tense. She's in the present moment. The speaker is thinking about, even lines number nine and 10 have that repetition of the word now. She's thinking about what the, what the grasshopper is doing in this present moment. This shows her sense of spiritual connection she has with this grasshopper. Finally, we see that she's, she's confronting the reader and she's asking the reader in a very philosophical way saying, tell me what else should I have done? She's using this rhetorical question saying that to be able to be in the present moment and to appreciate this, this grasshopper and to see how she can kneel down in the, in the grass like she says in line number 13 is what is going to give her a sense of purpose. And this rhetorical question, again, connects to that global issue of finding purpose 
and saying what's essential is to to pause and to look and appreciate. Finally, she asked the she asked the reader directly, "Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your wild and precious life?" I love the idea of ending the poem on this philosophical, again, rhetorical question with this passionate tone. Again, making the reader think about again the global issue of what you can do with your wild and precious life is to slow down, appreciate the small things that we see around us in that natural world and connect and find a sense of spiritual awakening like the speaker does. And this leaves us again with this sense of fulfillment ourselves as readers. Done. Wow. Giles. I'm sweating over here. You're sweating, huh? Yeah, it's, it's, I, these videos are fun to do, but when I'm in the moment and trying to do a model, it's, it's a lot harder. Well, Giles, I appreciate the honesty. You're very real about it. And speaking of passion with the natural world, how about your passion? I love the way you, you're so animated. I, I feel like you really enjoy this topic. Is this a topic that you care about? I do. I love nature. I think I also have to remind myself to slow down and appreciate the present moment. So there are things that I want to tell myself. And I guess that's why I like her poetry because it does make me think about these things. Um, and I think we're, I think we need to connect more to nature. And I would definitely, in my conclusion, talk about how essential our relationship to nature is and how we're losing that sometimes. Yeah, that's really unfortunate, and it's, it makes me sad as well. And I think the takeaway here for you students is that in any example you've seen so far in this video series, we're speaking about our passions. You should be doing the same. You should be choosing texts that you're passionate about, that you love, that you care about. All right, Josh, just to wrap up this quick zoom in, okay? A couple things I heard, and I want to remind students to do this as well. I heard continual references with line numbers. Why, why were you doing that? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be anchored in the text. I think it's really important, a little tip, is make sure that you put line numbers on your extract um, when you walk in, because that really anchors you in, in parts of the text. And, the, and also, your examiner can find where in the passage you're, you're, you're talking about. I think that's important. Right, another thing I noticed, I noticed a, an extensive repertoire of authorial choices. Mr. Giles, did you talk about them all? And if not, how did you select the ones that you wanted to talk about? No, I didn't talk about them all. I talk about I talked about them as they came up in the lines I was I was referring to. I was thinking about what were what was there, and I again I'm trying to be mindful of connecting those authorial choices to my global issue. Yeah, and that, again, easier said than done, but that was what I was trying to do. And no, I wasn't done. There were many things. There was a part of the poem I had skipped. Uh, well, you were done because you hit two minutes and 30 yeah, seconds, I, and by our definition of how we want to structure things, that's the done point for us. Yeah, right. Last thing, uh, you just mentioned it, I would like to reiterate for our students out there, please notice that Mr. Giles used the words global issue or synonymous phrasing throughout his delivery. Uh, again, it's notable that the words global issue are found everywhere on the rubric, and we need to make sure that we're definitely linking to that global issue uh, with great frequency. All right, guys, that wraps things up for our Zoom in video, right? Yeah. Um, once again, we hope this content's very helpful to you. We hope that it provides good value for you. Uh, if there are other things that you want to see, put them down in the comments. Ask us a question, we'll try to answer. Uh, and again, we're here to make videos for you to help you excel at the IB. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I hope that you have a great day. Bye.